When we have decimal numbers and we want to use a pivot table to count the numbers between a lower and an upper limit, why do we get a different answer when we use a pivot table as compared to the frequency array function? Now, when using a pivot table to take decimal numbers, group them into categories with an upper and lower limit, you click in one cell in the proper data set, go up to Insert, Tables, Pivot Table, and we want to put this on the existing sheet. Now, I want to put it right there, but it'll replace that, so I'm temporarily going to put it off to the side. Click OK. Now, we drag Amount down to Rows. And any time you drag a field down to rows, it instantly gives you a unique list of items. Now we want to group it, so we right click, group. It found the min and max and suggested increment or step. We want to start at 0, but I'd like to stop at 75. And we'll increment by 25. Now this is pretty cool, because when I click OK, it did 0 to 25, 25 to 50. And for the last category, it said, hey, we want to catch everything greater than that last upper limit, 75. So we'll add this catch all category. Now I'm going to move this. There's my move cursor. And in a pivot table, almost all the time, the upper limit is not included. So 25 is not counted in this first category. It's counted in the second category, where the 25 is the lower limit. Now I want to drag amount down to values. Now this is a number field, and it defaults to count because we've grouped here. And so there's our count, and that's the total number of records from the data set. Now with the array frequency function, you have to put the upper limits, not the lower limits, just the upper limits in the cell. And if we give the frequency array function three upper limits, it always creates one extra category to catch anything greater than whatever the last upper limit is. Now, if you're not in Microsoft 365, you have to pre-highlight all the cells and build your formula in the active cell at the top and then use Control-Shift-Enter to enter the formula. But Microsoft 365 just makes everything so much easier. We just select the top cell, type frequency. The data, those are all the numbers we're trying to count. Comma and bins, those are the upper limits. Because we gave it three upper limits, it'll create those three counting categories where the upper limit is included, which is the opposite of what the pivot table does. And it will always create this one extra category to catch anything greater than that last upper limit. Close parentheses, and in Microsoft 365, Four. it just hit Enter. Now all of the cells below are grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. So what is going on with the differences? Well, here's the categories that the pivot table automatically creates. For the first category, 0 and everything above up to but not including 25 is counted there. And the categories are the same except for when we give it in the dialog box for grouping a value like 75, which is smaller than the biggest value in the data set. It creates this one last category where the equal sign is on both sides, the lower limit and the upper limit, meaning 50 and 75, are counted in that category. And then it creates this last one, everything greater than 75. Now what does the array frequency function do? The upper limit is always included. The first category will catch everything equal to 25 or less. And then all the categories up to the, the last catch all one do not include the lower limit, but do include the upper limit. And then that greater than 75 catch all, that's the same as the pivot table. So the difference in counts comes from the different ways that the pivot table and the frequency array function create the categories. Now this is a small data set, so I went ahead and listed the values and where they fell. Sure enough, for a pivot table, that upper limit isn't included. That 25 is in the category where 25 is the lower limit. However, this one strange category where the equal sign is on both sides, 
the 75 and 50 are included. With the frequency array function, that 25 right there, that's the upper limit we gave it, and upper limits are always included. So the 25 gets counted here. The 50 is counted here, and the 75 is counted in this category. All right, here's your bonus tip. What happens with the pivot table grouping feature when we have not decimal numbers, but whole numbers? We can click in one cell in the table, use our keyboard, Alt N V T, existing sheet, click OK, drag amount down to rows, right click, and we'll try the same thing. 75 will be the upper limit of the last category, and we'll increment by 25. Then we drag amount down to values. And there's no ambiguity in our classes at all, because the 24 and the 25 are not the same number as they were up here. When you have decimal numbers, this is how the pivot table groups. And so you have to be aware that there are some categories that are automatically created. But here, the labels that they provide give us no ambiguity. 24 is going to go here. 25 goes here. All right, here's bonus number two. Now, how did I extract these numbers? Well, guess what? This is a pivot table that's looking at a data set. And they have a built-in feature that if you double click the cell where the calculation is, double click, wow, it went and got all the records from the table, repeated the field names at the top, and put it on a new sheet. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Tell me which method you like. Is it the frequency array function or the pivot table? And be sure to sub. And here's some more cool videos for you to check out. Yeah.